Hello to everyone in the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Cathedral community and all of our friends. Christos Anesti, Christ is risen. This is Father Jonathan, and today I wanted to conclude our conversation about the second of the Beatitudes, a reflection on its significance. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now, we talked a lot in the previous videos about the notion of mourning. In the first video, we talked about the idea that mourning is also calls to mind the notion of our grief or our sorrows at losses, losses of loved ones, losses of friends, and also losses of different aspects of our life, uh, our life position, and losses of our identity, meaning, all of these things. And in those losses, we mourn. And despite the fact that we mourn, we know that we will be comforted, comforted by our, by our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. And this idea of being comforted in the Holy Spirit we'll return to in our conversation today. We also talked about blessed mourning, which is mourning over our sins, our shortcomings, our tendency because of the nature of the reality of this world, our tendency to fall short, to sin, to not be authentically ourselves. And this is the ancestral sin, the tendency to come up short to not do what we are called to do or more importantly be who we are called to be and how the recognition of this leads to blessed mourning which compels us to repent to seek forgiveness and offer forgiveness to those who have wronged us as well and in this way cultivating a deeper more authentic relationship with our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ his father by extension of course and in the Holy Spirit this is what we are called to do and this is what repentance allows us to do it also opens us up for more authentic relationships with our brothers and sisters for how can we love God whom we haven't seen when we don't love our neighbor who we have seen but today I wanted to shift our focus to the second part to what we receive what actually makes this a beatitude what makes it us blessed in our mourning which is ultimately that we will be comforted. This is the great joy, the thing that makes us joyful in the midst of this reality, the reality of our suffering, which we mourn for, that we will be comforted. And when I hear that term comfort or comforted, I'm reminded of the prayer that we pray before many of the services to the Holy Spirit, Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who are everywhere present and filling all things, the treasury of blessings and giver of life. Come and abide in us, cleanse us from every stain, and save our soul, O good one. And this prayer to the Paraklitos, the Comforter, reminds us that it, if we receive comfort, it comes from God. It comes from God's Holy Spirit. For the word Comfort at the end of the Beatitude it comes from the same word in Greek as paraklitos, the word for comforter that we give or we name the Holy Spirit. And I'm reminded also of a connection to the first of the Beatitudes, especially the notion of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. And I do this because in St. Maximus the Confessor's commentary on the Lord's Prayer, he draws a connection between the Holy Spirit and the kingdom. For he says, though, the Lord's Prayer is a Trinitarian prayer. Of course, it's offered by Christ to his Father, and it's because we are connected and joined to Christ that we're able to call God Father, to dare call God Father, and to say, Our Father who art in heaven. And when he talks about the kingdom, St. Maximus says, in the Lord's Prayer, when we say, thy kingdom come, we're really saying, your Holy Spirit come. Because the Holy Spirit is that which connects us, draws us, and allows us to be members of Christ. We are baptized into Christ by the descent of the Holy Spirit. We are sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, becoming members of Christ. And being members of Christ, we participate in the reality of his life his life, his body, which is seated at the right hand of the Father in the kingdom. And so when we are comforted, 
we receive the Comforter, we enter into the Kingdom. And it speaks to our, the reality that we talked about with the first of the Beatitudes, that the poor in spirit inherit the Kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the Kingdom of Heaven. And as we are poor in spirit in the midst of our sorrows, our sufferings, in the midst of our blessed mourning, realizing that we are absolutely dependent on God for everything, including our comfort, the Comforter will come and allow us to enter into the kingdom. It seems to me that as we meditate on these Beatitudes, we'll come to find these deep connections between each of them, showing that it's not different things that are being spoken about, but a singular reality of union with God, communion with God, that's manifested in this reality that we're living, in this life that we're living in the midst of the world, through our virtues. Because as we enter into the kingdom here and now, through our poverty of spirit, as we are comforted in the midst of our mourning, we will begin to manifest the reality of that relationship with God, that relationship of being united with him through the grace of the Holy Spirit in the church, being members of Christ's body, his church. And it should orient the way that we interact with other people in the world, how we live our lives. And we'll talk more about this in the third Beatitude Reflection, which will begin tomorrow. God bless you. We're here for you. We love you. Anything at, you, at all that you need, don't hesitate to reach out. Call us, email us, send us a message on social media, leave a note in the comment section, anything at all, 24 hours a day. We are here for you. We love you dearly. God bless you. Christos Anesti, Christ is risen.